another side of Martin Luther King Jr. Now this is one person that they will have heard of. Yes, they will have heard of. one of you know, one of the most famous black men in history. Like blank, blank stares and they get them, you know, quite a lot of them will have known. Of course, you know what they know about him, but still, at least they've heard of them, give me something to work with, you know. At Shepsut, I like to remind them that they were That's female right. pharaohs of ancient Kemet. Right. And you know, when, when we have time, we have pictures of her temples and all Yeah, I can't wait to go back to her temple in November. I'm come see you. Haliterat, Nubia, uh, 641 AD. Not, by now, the Arabs are in charge. Mm. And once the Arabs get in charge, uh, see, and this is important because I'm trying to make sure the children understand when the Arabs got to Egypt, Everything had been done. They're like tourists. Okay? Wow. I mean, things were thousands of years old before they got there, even though now they're projecting themselves way back into the time. But they weren't even there. Right. Right. And so. But that's what they've done. They've magically put themselves back in time to where. They said that. You know, they got because when you go to them, Egypt, they're controlling the whole narrative. The rest of the stuff. So, but anyway, it's okay for them to lie to their kids, but we can't lie to ours. There you go. But the bottom line here is they, they got in power in Egypt at the time decided to go south, kind of like the Romans did, uh, going south against uh, uh, Amenarenus, Kush, Nubia, kind of this uh, close by area. And he fought them to a standstill, then gave them a whip, whip and pushed them back up into Egypt and, and made an agreement with them, signed a, a, a treaty called Bach, that they can't come through there for another 700 years, 700 years, you know, without a note from the mother. You know. Mm -hmm. But I mean, there were terms that they could come through. But the point is, you had the power to make the treaty and to enforce the treaty. Mm -hmm. And now we can last 700 minutes, you know? Mm -hmm. So this is the, and a lot of this has to do, of course, over time with, you know, just that little bit of jump in military technology will put you behind and get you in bad shape. Mm -hmm. Muhammad Ali, greatest of all times. Of course, I tell him about the sacrifices he made based on principle. Not your joke, Senegalese. Uh, uh, King or chief of Kayar, which is a place that you can still go to today. Prince tried to run their railroad through there. Him and his people fought them to the death. Antonio Maceo in Cuba, you know, the Cubans had the War of Independence against Spain. Uh, one of their leading generals was uh, Antonio Maceo. They call him the Bronze Titan. So if you go there, you'll, uh, I haven't gone, but my friends have seen that they give good tribute to him there in Cuba. Patrice Lumumba. Uh, Lumumba was uh, the first president coming out of the colonial order from the Belgians. Uh, tried, he, he was killed very quickly. You know, basically we know organized by well, Western intelligence. But uh, I also use this opportunity when I talk about uh, the Congo to talk about the Belgians mm. during the time of the rubber extraction where we lost some eight to 10 million people in million. that whole thing, right? Uh, How many? 20 million. Okay, so 20 million, but whatever it is, we lost millions and millions of people. And I always show the children how this man will go out and his wife is still here and his children. He doesn't bring back enough rubber. Uh, well, they'll cut the hand off for the wife or the child. And so, you know, we, there's pictures of people holding hands, holding up like that. And another thing is that uh, you can Google it. You can see where the Belgians, uh, under glass, like you're in C's candy, will have all of these chocolate hands you know, for sale. So you go, I want a little, you know. You see, now they don't do that anymore, at least so I'm told, but um, they certainly did it for a long time. And I asked one person, I actually had somebody came through here who was from that area, and they were saying, <coughs> for them, it was more like a demonstrating the old times when we had, you know, this kind of global global reach. Really? Mm. You know That's what I mean? Story. And so when they're buying chocolate hands, like, you know, mm -hmm. remember when we had power, you know? It's really uh, uh, kind of crazy. All right, in Kwabanika, another one struggling against the Germans, another one whose head they took off. Children still want to know what to do with the heads. Uh, Robert Mugabe, British Broadcasting Corporation, said he's the worst African in the world. And once they do that, I call my artist. Say, the guy must be all right. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, get him, Jerry, sometimes get him. You, sometimes you got to judge based on the resistance. Right. You know? Uh, but of course, what they're angry about him for, no Nobel Prize here, you know, he took the land back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you got to get the land back and leave them with the trophy. Mm -hmm. uh, Elijah Muhammad, uh, if we look back at the Nation of Islam over time, I, I don't think we can find a place that had a nation within a nation that functioned, had a structure, had an economy, had education uh, uh, structure, and of course we know they were doing with bringing young people up, bringing people out of prison. 
all of that. So, you know, people tell you a lot of other things about Elijah Muhammad, but we always say, don't throw the baby out with the bath water. Because that was a nation inside the nation. I didn't be Wells, a lot of the people, kids always think she looks like Michael Jackson. <laughs> oh my goodness, man. <laughs> I always say somewhere around Thriller. And wow. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, anti-lynching crusader. And, uh, you know, we've had all these pictures, and a lot of you, I'm sure, have seen the pictures of the Africans being lynched and people partying and, and having a picnic and all the rest of that in front of there. So we have those things to remind us things. And for them, it's very difficult for them to imagine because... You know, the, what they've been sold about the West. That's why they're in a long, long line at every embassy going to America or Europe because, you know, they got a story. They ain't going to be in long lines next year, though. What happened? Yay. What's going on next year? We already know. Yeah, the lines are going to be y'all lining up exactly. to get out. <laughs> exactly. Going the other way. And they're going to check them passports, too. You mm -hmm. think it's going to be easy to leave? You watch. Mm -hmm. It ain't going to be so easy. Uh, Okay, John Akello, uh, Zanzibar. Uh, he had a, what they considered to be a violent revolution uh, against the Arabs. But the Arabs had been on the head of these Africans for generations, and they wouldn't leave nicely. So the Afro Shariza party had to raise up and fight and kick them out. And soon after, Zanzibar joined Tanganyika to become Tanzania. Uh, Fela Kute, the great resistance musician. Uh, my guy was here a few days ago. He kind of colored them up for me. That's, that looks good. Yeah. Make a couple of little adjustments here. But anyway. Yeah, yeah. especially with the part that's covering up Nigeria and uh, his name. Yeah, so. Well, when yeah. I say Fela Kute, most people will get it. So. Yeah, right. But anyway, um, you know Fela. Fela was uh, writing songs and he was just one of the most uh, anti-establishment truth tellers that we've ever had and no matter what they did to fella he just come they jail him beat him whatever he just write another album more insulting to the government than the last one you know because he just didn't have fear they say he died of AIDS but who knows 20 something wise and they were all okay so I don't know how that works <laughs> all right uh Zumbia Brazil uh when in the the Africans on the uh, plantations in Brazil, these are Portuguese plantations, when they escaped to the mountains, they were the Maroons and they called their, their settlements Quilombos. Uh, Palmares was the, was the best known and longest lasting Quilombo and uh, Zumbi was the, the force behind that. Um, Nascimento, we're in the middle of painting touch up as you can see, so we still got these words. Nascimento, he was kind of a the African-centered activist, scholar, uh, cultural icon there in the most recent times there in Brazil, uh, just for doing things like an ex black experimental theater and some of the other things. Uh, they were kicking him out of the country, harassing him, making life difficult. But he was kind of that um, African-centered uh, uh, stalwart, stalwart that was in Brazil uh, during those days. Nascimento. Uh, Nijoma, who is still alive as far as I know, but didn't know that way back when we first did this. So he's mm -hmm. kicking, kicking a long time. But they had to get themselves free. Namibia was Southwest Africa had to get themselves free uh, from the South Africans because uh, after the Germans lost in the, in the World Wars, they had to give up their colonies, that being one of them. So 